Hi there, uh, my name is Burke Bowers. I work in the business banking division at Harco Credit Union. I'm here today with Dan Thompson of The Bike Doctor. Uh, we're gonna talk to him a little bit about his business and his experience this year. Dan, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, absolutely, man, thanks for having me. Uh, so first things first, just tell us and our membership a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so uh, a little bit about me. So me and Bike Doctor. So Bike Doctor is your local bike shop. We've been in Hartford County for Six and a half years. Uh, I got into the bike business, I guess maybe a total of 10 years ago. Uh, a local cyclist. I, I don't live in the county, I live down in Baltimore, but uh, I have really enjoyed the time that Bike Doctor has had here and getting to know everyone in the area. It is a, uh, it is a beautiful area and I really enjoy riding my bike in. Great. Uh, so, so just expand on that a little bit. So it's sales and service and accessories. What all do you offer to? Yeah, absolutely. So we're full service. We're an independent bicycle dealer. We offer uh, sales of bicycles. Uh, we have full service. So if you need anything fixed, uh, if your bike's broken or if you uh, just need some advice, you can always feel free to come stop in. And then, you know, we've got all the, the goodies that you might want with a bike. You know, if, if you need a pump or a tube or a tire, uh, we're the, the place to come. Or true story, like me, if you get a flat tire and you have to walk your bike two miles to get it fixed, this is the place to it's, go. Yeah, it's not the uh, not the first or last <laughs> time that'll happen. Yeah, for sure. So, um, kind of the spin that we're taking this year is to find out how COVID-19 has changed um, our lives and the businesses in our community. So, talk to us a little bit about how COVID has changed things for you and for your client base. Yeah, so... Uh, COVID-19. So when it first uh, happened, March, we were we were really nervous. We were afraid that we were going to be one of the businesses that had to be shut down. Um, but we were very fortunate. Bike shops are considered essential uh, under federal guidelines because we're part of the transportation infrastructure. And we were able to stay open and, and we quickly found out that we were going to have the opposite problem. So uh, COVID-19 obviously ramped up all sorts of safety procedures for us. We had to do a lot more sanitizing, especially early on in the pandemic. We limited the number of people in the store. Uh, our hours changed. Um, we had to limit our, our number of hours because we had to do these extra things. Um, and then, of course, the, the biggest change that I think we've experienced is there's been a major shift in our business in that demand has, has gone very high. Um, and that has also caused a little bit of a supply crunch as well. So there have been a lot of changes to the business over the last, shoe. I guess it's only been six months, but it seems much longer. Yes, yeah, so there's been lots of lots of development over the last six months. So it's, I guess it's a good problem to have, right, in light of everything that's happened this year. How do you manage having both a supply problem and a demand problem, both to the positive? Yeah, so, so it is a good problem to have. We do hear that a lot, but uh, the key word is it's still a problem. Um, so we've, we've tried to do a number of things to, to, to manage that supply and demand problem. Um, we do try to leverage our size. So, I mean, obviously here in Bel Air, we are just one store, but Bike Doctor is seven stores strong. So we do try to leverage our size to kind of pull bikes from different stores um, and, and put inventory where it's needed uh, and manage our relationships with suppliers so that they can prioritize getting product to us. Um, and then we also just really try to communicate as much as possible. The biggest uh, thing that we do to manage uh, the supply and demand problem is communicating with our customers. Because if they understand that there is possibly an issue with them getting a bike, or the, the impetus to order is definitely a little bit more on this year, then, then they understand that they need to be uh, a little bit more up and ready to order something or ready to walk out. Uh, so it's, it's really a communication thing for us as well as sort of using our, our size to kind of move things around as best we can, whether that's in between our stores or with other brand partners. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, great. So let's think ahead, maybe hopefully next year or sometime sooner when the world goes back to some semblance of normalcy. Yeah, hopefully. Um, what changes do you think you guys have made that may linger and become permanent? Yeah, so there, there might be a couple things that would uh, linger and become permanent. Uh, I'm not sure when our hours will go back to normal. Um, we have shortened our hours, and I don't know that we will lengthen them again. Uh, or at least I, I don't know when that will be. I think that'll be the primary thing that I'm not sure will go back to normal. And then as a secondary thing, I think that just some of what we do and what we sell will really change. 
because of the pandemic and because everyone's very much into social distancing, um, you know, a lot more of the at-home stuff has uh, really skyrocketed in popularity. So some of the, the makeup of the store inventory might not go back to normal for quite some time as certain areas experience lots of growth and others, which used to be popular, maybe aren't quite as in vogue at the moment. Hmm, interesting. So speaking of, of um, people working out at home, um, there's a wonderful system behind me that people can take home yeah. um, and ride in the comfort of their own home in the colder months. Um, how do you compete with the Pelotons of the world who are really um, advertising people being stuck at home longer than normal this year? Yeah, so there, there's definitely been an explosion in, in home exercise stuff. And, and we love Peloton. They're, they're a great system. They send us a lot of shoe customers. Uh, so we really appreciate that. Um, we do have systems that, that definitely cater to that audience. That's sort of one of the, the areas in our inventory that's experiencing a lot of growth. And one of the things that I mentioned that might not change right away, um, so one of the brand partners that we work with, Wahoo, uh, they make an excellent indoor riding system uh, that, that really caters to the cyclist. Um, and so the Peloton and the Wahoo system are, are very, they're just for two different people. Um, there's, there's definitely some overlap there, but the, the system that we carry from Wahoo definitely caters a little bit more to the dedicated cyclist with the ability to put their own bike on a, a system in their own home. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it's, it's behind me. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> uh, let's talk about community because I think that's important in, the, in this market, especially in, in cycling too. Cycling yeah. is a very community-oriented sport. Absolutely. Um, and with people being socially distanced, um, how has that impacted your ability to keep the community together in riding? So it, it has impacted things a little bit on, on two fronts. Um, of course, when the pandemic first happened, uh, you know, no one really wanted to ride outside in groups. I mean, it was really a solo adventure. Luckily, cycling is one of the things you can still do as a, as a solo adventure. Um, but as things have moved on, folks have, you know, started riding together in groups. But here is a shop, you know, we have taken a stance that we, we're really trying to in, endorse social distancing and we, we're trying to do our part to end the pandemic. And, and as much of a bummer as it's been, we have not been able to have any of our usual group rides. Normally every Saturday morning, you know, we would meet in our parking lot, 20, 30, sometimes 40, 50 people strong. Uh, and we would all go for a 25 mile bike ride. And it was great and I got to know so many faces and so many local cyclists. Um, and this year, unfortunately, that just hasn't been a reality at all. And, and it has uh, affected the community a little bit. Um, cycling is still very strong. And, and as I mentioned earlier, we're experiencing a big surge in business. So obviously people are riding, uh, but there is definitely uh, a little bit of a hit to the community there. Um, the other hit to the community that, that we have really noticed is uh, with our charity partner. Um, we work very closely with an organization called Jam Squad. Uh, Jam Squad is a local Hartford County charity uh, and they basically take in unwanted or unused bikes and they fix them up and give them to kids that can't otherwise uh, afford to purchase a bicycle. And uh, you know, a lot of their, their time is spent fixing these bikes and these workshop days are at volunteers' houses and they're kind of in close proximity. And so the pandemic has really hampered their ability to get the bikes into the hands of kids that need them. Just because, again, social distancing requirements, uh, you know, make the, the work days a little bit um, harder to manage. Mm, that's tough. Yeah. I think charities across the country are having similar issues of trying to figure I, out. Yeah, I can only imagine the challenges the volunteers are, are finding. Because, I mean, I know a lot of those organizations, everyone is kind of working in limited space. Yeah. Well, Dan, I appreciate your time today. One of the things that we always like to do at the end is is kind of give you the floor and let you deliver whatever message you like to, to our members and viewers that are maybe watching this. So yeah. I give you the floor to say what you'd like. Yeah, so I mean, cycling is, is cycling has been a great uh, gateway for me into so many things. Uh, you know, it's really helped me become more physically fit. It helped me start a business. It's helped me know so many people in the community. And it seems like just uh, such a small thing, like riding a bike. Everyone learned how to do it when they were a kid, but it's just such a small thing now. Um, I like to tell people that little hinges swing big doors. Uh, so, you know, that little small change in your life can make a huge difference. Uh, so I would encourage everyone, uh, you know, if you haven't ridden your bike in a while, or, or maybe if you, have and just want to ride a little more 
get out there. It's going to make a big difference. Great. Thanks again for your time. Yeah, absolutely. It. Thank you, guys.